Hi, my name is Kevin Hyatt. I'm a neuroradiologist at Wake Forest and the current AJNR podcast editor. I'm fortunate to be joined today by Dr. Mauricio Castillo, who is a professor of radiology at the University of North Carolina. To list a few of his accolades, he is a gold medal recipient from both the American Society of Neuroradiology and the American Rankin Ray Society. He has authored or co-authored, co-authored over 500 articles, has been an article reviewer, reviewer for nearly 30 journals, has been on 11 journal editorial boards, and is the emeritus editor for the AJNR. Dr. Castillo is an expert in manuscript writing and editing, and has kindly agreed to offer some pointers for how to approach peer reviewing an article. This will be a two-part interview. The target audience for our discussion will be radiology trainees and early career faculty, but let's face it, we could all use a little improvement when it comes to reviewing articles. Dr. Castillo, thanks so much for joining me today. No, thank you for inviting me, Kevin, and thank you to our new editor, Max Wintermark, for including me in this initiative. Let's start off with a, um, with a general question. What are the goals of a peer review? Well, let me begin, Kevin, by saying that reviewing articles uh, is an honor. Uh, you get to see what will come up in the literature before it actually comes. So from a knowledge and scientific standpoint, it'll make you a better research and clinical uh, neuroreologist. Uh, and I think that the goals of reviewing is assure a good quality science, uh, assure or improve the quality of the articles submitted by uh, pointing out things constructively that can be improved uh, within the article. Obviously, we want to avoid duplications. So one of our goals in the review process is to make sure there's nothing identical that has been published before, and especially something that is so close to the new submission that can be taken as uh, plagiarism. And of of course, uh, you know, it is uh, also our responsibility uh, to try to make all the science available to uh, uh, radiology and clinicians in general, and that improves also uh, the standing that we have with respect uh, uh, to our science in the overall uh, medical uh, society. So let me say, uh, too, that uh, reviewing is an art and a science, but I think that both can be learned, and I think they can be learned by doing a lot of it. Great. You know, I, I'm sure over the years you've seen a lot of different articles across the spectrum of quality. And so for from your perspective, what makes um, and a lot of different article reviews, uh, given your positions with many of these journals, and from your perspective, what makes a good review? Well, a good review is one that is detailed, that is clear, that, as I said before, is constructive and not destructive, uh, that will help the article be better than when it was sent to the journal, and that will help our editor-in-chief or our section editors make a decision as to whether it has to be approved uh, and accepted or rejected. Let me show you a, a little bit of how I start a review, uh, Kevin. Uh, I'm old fashioned and a little bit older than you guys, so I still print uh, uh, the articles, but you can do it uh, on the computer. Uh, as you can see, uh, the first things that I do is uh, an overall read, particularly the first parts, the abstract and the introduction, and I go making notes. Uh, and uh, when I turn the page around, I generally have a number one or a number two or a number three, and then in the page around, I go writing notes in the same order uh, and at the same more or less height that those parts of the article are. And that will be uh, the way uh, that I uh, do my reviews. Uh, but, uh, you know, a, a review has to be uh, very detailed and I think has to look at every part of the article uh, uh, with patients. You cannot rush a review. I think that even I myself, who have done hundreds of reviews, I still take maybe between two and three hours per article that I review. So it is a, a time-consuming uh, activity. But I think it's something that now even counts in many of our institutions as part of your uh, promotion package. You can include this activity, and it'll be uh, included uh, uh, for you to progress uh, uh, on the academic uh, ladder. That's great advice. Detailed, constructive, take the time necessary to review the article well. 
what what makes a bad review then? What are what are things that would make something not a good review? I think that a very short review, uh, one or two lines that says, you know, I read the article and I don't have any problems with it and it should be published as is, that is a very bad review and you see a lot of them. Uh, in my experience, when I was the editor of AJNR, I think that in eight years I saw one single paper and it was a review article that was published uh, without uh, any changes. So when you're an author and you submit an article, you have to be aware that, you know, that there'll be changes and that perhaps those changes will be extensive, but they are done or they are suggested to you as an author in uh, good uh, uh, faith. A review that concentrates on issues with language, typos, and grammar is also a bad review, Kevin. I think that, you know, these things get taken care of later uh, uh, in the process, and you as a reviewer should not concentrate uh, uh, on those issues. And another thing that's a bad review is if you actually I uh, don't know anything about the topic. It's a topic that is, is of no interest to you, and you did not take the time to go and learn something about the topic because you would be surprised at the number of authors that actually comment on the fact that just by reading the review, they are aware that the reviewer was not an expert in that area. So even if you're not an expert, you, you should go and read and, uh, and uh, have some knowledge uh, with regards to the topic of the article being reviewed. It's so important. Yeah, having some, some background understanding of the topic is essential to performing a good review. And that, and that being said, can anyone perform a good peer review or should there be minimum requirements for who can perform a good peer review? Well, I think that you know, we are doing this activity right now because we all believe that there has to be uh, some training for our reviewers. Uh, in the past, there was no training, and I think people my age or perhaps even younger than I, we learn uh, to do the reviews by doing a lot of them, uh, and that is a, 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 a painful situation. Having said that, I think that, you know, the most important uh, aspect uh, when you are reviewing an article is to desire to review the article. If you don't want to review, no matter how good a reviewer you are, how knowledgeable you are, your review will not uh, be uh, of good quality. And I think taking the time to do it um, is very important. Sometimes, Kevin, even our less experienced reviewers who put a lot of effort and a lot of time into a review do a much better review than our very expert and senior reviewers who really don't care uh, any more about the process or are just tired of reviewing. Very good. That's, a, that's excellent advice. And one, one final question for you for this part of, for this, um, uh, for the first part of our interview today is how do you start the peer review of an article? Well, the first decision, Kevin, is you have to decide whether you're going to accept it or not. Do you know uh, the topic or is this an area of special interest to you? You have experience in it. Are you going to be able to return the review within the allotted time? Because that is always oh, that something nagging uh, the editor in chief getting those uh, reviews out on time. Uh, and uh, another thing uh, that you should uh, uh, be aware of uh, is that just uh, by looking at the abstract, you can probably get a good feel of whether you are the correct reviewer or you're not the correct reviewer for that article. The abstract, if you look at an abstract, you should have the majority of the information uh, that uh, you will find uh, in the paper and the article itself, and you should be able to spot the big issues that perhaps will lead to a rejection just by reading the abstract. The second thing that I've done after I read the abstract and I think that I understand the topic and I'm willing to spend the time and return the review within the allotted time is then I go ahead and read the introduction. The introduction ought to give you a pretty good background uh, as to uh, uh, what's being discussed uh, and the introduction ought to have enough references that you yourself as a reviewer can go and look at those references and read them and uh, get some more information uh, on uh, the uh, topic. I think that in the second part of this interview, we're going to talk specifically as to how we handle each individual section of each article. But one last thing, Kevin, that's important. Sometimes 
you as a reviewer will get a review on a topic that you don't know anything about. And you start wondering, why did the editor-in-chief send this article to me? And many of those times they are sent to you because the editor-in-chief could not find any other person to review it. And if you have, uh, and if you're experienced uh, and you're a good reviewer, then he'll ask you to review something that you're not even an expert. So, you know, when that has happened to me, what I generally do is I get in touch with the editor-in-chief and say, you know, you know this article that you just sent me. Uh, it's not my area of expertise. I think that, you know, that I can read and do a, a good review. Would you still uh, want me to do it? Or would you like to send it to somebody else who's an expert in this area? And many times the editor-in-chief will be very honest and say, you know, well, I've gone through 10 reviewers and nobody wants to do this. So I'm asking you as a favor to do it for the journal. And then I think that, you know, you have to, uh, you have to go ahead and, and help the editor-in-chief and do that review. Excellent advice. Thank you so much for your time. As, as a reminder to our listeners, uh, we will be doing a part two of this lecture, so please, um, please look for that and for more great advice from Dr. Castillo. Thanks so much. Thank you, Kevin.